Hello and welcome to Moving Pictures Kenya. You are right in time for the story about the Benga playing Muzungu. His name is Ian Eagleson. He has a PhD in ethnomusicology. He has studied Benga music up to the highest level. When I visited his house in Allentown, I found Ian practicing Musa Juma's song, Siaya Kababa. Lando, lando, na chui mama, uragwe kambuta, toto kisuwe. Lando, lando, oh man, I almost had it. My name is Bonventure, and this is the African Eye. Does that sound good? Kindly like, share, comment, and subscribe to Moving Pictures Kenya. Uh, my name is Ian Eagleson from Yorktown, New York State. Um, we're here at my house in Allentown, Pennsylvania. I've lived here since 2013. I know you through the Kenyan community, so. I have a, at this point, pretty long history <clears throat> of knowing Kenyans and uh, collaborating with them. And I know many Kenyans who live here in Allentown. So that's the whole story, how that came to be. But uh, it's a <clears throat> it all revolves around music. Yeah, because when I came in, I saw a lot of music instruments and I was wondering whether this is a recording studio. <laughs> yeah, I wish. <laughs> I have a day job, so I work in construction also. So okay. I'm busy with that during the day, and then when I get time, I work on recordings. And in my in other periods of my life, I was much more involved with playing music. So nowadays, it's like. It's just sitting here. It's ready to go. I'm, I'm dying to get, dive into it more. But you know, priorities change because I have to find work and things like that. Okay. So you talk of music. Which kind of music are you associating yourself with? Well, I, I started playing music when I was a teenager. So. Um, I started playing rock and roll and jazz. Uh, when I was in high school, I had a band and I also played in the school bands. In college, I studied a lot of music. I, I, uh, my major was anthropology and then I started to study ethnomusicology, which is it's basically a combination of anthropology and music history, musicology. Okay. Um, that that connected me to Kenyan music because 
I, while in college, I spent a semester in Kenya. Okay. And there was a program I participated in there where I was able to uh, do my own research and I started to learn about Kenyan music. That's where this connection started. Okay. Um, the program I was in was, I liked it because they, they encouraged you to go out and discover things on your own. So there was no supervision really. They would give you an idea like maybe try here to learn about music. So I, the, the initial <coughs> connection was I went to the National Theater in Kenya and I met a musician there named Julius Shutu. So he was a, he was from the coast. He was a, he was a percussionist. Yeah. He was involved in a lot of these cultural troops that exist in Nairobi, Nairobi and Mombasa. And I'm not really a percussionist, so I didn't want to pursue that, but the thing that interested me was stringed instruments, like the coming from Western Kenya. So with the Luo community, it's Nyatiti. Okay. Luya, it's called Litungo, I think. Yeah. So that, that interested me. And I ended up getting connected with a Luo musician in Nyatiti. So okay. His name was Ojuang Anyura. So okay. that's how this got started. So I, I learned how to play that a bit. I ended up pursuing this, this study of Kenyan music. Okay. I went to graduate school here to study ethnomusicology and eventually went back to Kenya. The first time was 1995 and then I came back in the year 2000, 2002 and then 2004 also. So when I returned, all these years I had been uh, pursuing this interest with Kenyan music. I was playing in rock bands here in the U.S. So when I came back to Kenya, I I realized that you know at first I had been looking at the traditional music, but then I. I came to realize like the, the thing that was really happening was the more contemporary thing with bands and guitar playing. So I, I started to pursue that. That's how I, I got interested in benga. Okay. Um, so the, the, the musicians I, I had connected with in my first trip were able to introduce me to some benga musicians. So. In 2000, I started to learn about that okay. and learn how to play guitar in Kenyan style, you know, in Benga. Um, I worked with a musician named Otieno Jaguasi, okay. who he's from Guasi in South Nyanza. Yeah. Uh, he, he was in a band called Solar Africa. So okay. that band was, it had, he played with a musician, Omondi Tony, who, yeah, he, both of these guys passed away many years ago, so. Yeah, Omondi Tony and his brother was Musa Juma. Yeah, Musa Juma. So, the, this guy I was working with, Otieno Jaguasi, he played music in that style, which was similar to uh, Ochien Kabaseli music. Yes. I think it came out of that those roots yeah so i i met these musicians and uh the drummer in that band uh i would go on this is uh steve omari onyago omari mm -hmm. so I, I, he lives he, here now 
<laughs> so <laughs> I would go on to do a lot of stuff with him later on. But it, with the band that started there in Nairobi, uh, these groups were playing in like Dandora. So I spent time hanging out there learning, just learning some of their songs and then asking questions and recording, yeah. doing some live recordings of them playing at these bars over yeah. there. Yeah. Um, so then in 2004, I was doing, I was actually getting my doctorate in ethnomusicology at that point. So to get that degree, you have to write a dissertation about what you're studying. So I, I got some grants to do a, a research for a year. So yeah. I spent that mostly in Nairobi and then in Kisumu and around Kisumu because I was studying Luo music, Benga. So uh, during that time, I kept working with the same guy, Otiano Jaguasi. Yeah. So um, that was a very interesting time. I mean, I learned, I spent most of my time at clubs in Nairobi and Kisumu, Homa Bay, Mbita, all these towns around. Yeah. Siaya. Um, and I got to meet most of the guys who were playing at that time. Okay. Um, so I, during that time, Bengo was, you know, I haven't been there in a while, so I'm not sure what the status of these type of bands is. I know over the years, uh, Luo music bands have got really interested in, in new style Ohangala, which yes, is, yes. it's similar, but different. It's like a small group, yeah. no guitars. Mm -hmm. um, but back then, that was before Ohangala really became popular. So there were, there were a lot of bands and some of the older musicians who had started Benga back in the 70s were still playing like Owino Misiani, yes. uh, a few others. Yeah. And I got very interested in uh, Kolela Maze. I like his music. So he, he, was, he had died in the year 2000. Yeah. Um, but I met his sons who, they, after he had died, they started playing his songs. Like, I think he kept them out of music while he was alive, but yeah. when he died, they all, most of them yeah. went straight for it because it, it was in their, in their blood, you know, they, they wanted it. Um, so I became friends with them. And one of those musicians, uh, Freddie Owino, mm -hmm. He lives here also. So the way all these guys got here is it's a long story, but yeah. um, I can continue. Um, so after spending that year there, uh, in the, all right, so to back up, uh, in the few years preceding that, 2004, I had been in a band here called Golden. So this is a rock band. Yeah. It's guys I met in college. So we were pretty active, like we recorded albums and went on tours, you know, playing all around the United States. Yeah. Um, when I was in Kenya, one of the guys from that band named Alex Minoff, he came to visit me. So we had always been interested in African music and trying to incorporate something of that into our rock music when we were writing new songs, you know? Mm -hmm. So he came there and we ended up collaborating with some musicians and made a recording. I had a small studio like this, even more basic than this, a very, a laptop, mm -hmm. a mixer like that, um, a few microphones, I carried them around with me. So during that year, I did many recordings like that, but we also did one 
where we wrote some new songs with my friends from from Kenya. Yeah. So that band, we ended up following up on that when I came home, and we took the recording we made there and we released it here. So, and luckily we got connected with a record label that wanted to promote it, and we did. Uh, we put the record out, and then. To our surprise, they said this band needs to perform. So we we didn't think of that because yeah. the other guys were there in Kenya. Mm -hmm. So through a lot of th that was all new to me to how to how to get musicians from Kenya to come to the U.S. I never anticipated I would have to figure out how that works. Yeah, but to make a long story short, short we managed to get them over so we started performing with this band which is called Extra Golden. So it was like it was like a branch of Golden, mm -hmm. the other band. Yeah. Um, so th that band included Steve Omari, the drummer who yeah. I mentioned, because I, by that point the first guy who had connected me with this, Oten Ochieno Jaguasi, had died. Yeah. So unfortunately, he died young. Um, but Steve was there, and then another musician I met. Pio Bilongo from mm. Siaya, mm. he joined us. So this band, w we worked here in the U.S. and also we went on tours in Europe, uh, UK. That band was going from around 2006 to 2010. Um, and then, and so in the process of playing with that band, um, I got connected with Kenyans in the U.S. It was, it was almost, it was very random actually. I was, I was, uh, I didn't know any Kenyans lived around where I lived in New York. Mm -hmm. So I went to a, a store, it was like Office Max or something. Mm -hmm. I was trying to buy CDs, mm -hmm. cases, because one of the guys in my band wanted to print out his CDs yeah. so we could sell them on tour. Mm. So when I was at the store, one of the guys working there, this was in White Plains, New York. He, I started talking to him about this and he was like, wow, I, I, I've heard of that guy. Um, this man was named Jimmy Kingy. Mm. So all of a sudden I got connected to all these Kenyans who lived on the East Coast from this one guy, okay. just randomly. Yeah. <laughs> so one of the first people who called me, or he had heard about this, uh, was a guy from Allentown named Doko Dote. So okay. he, he was a big music fan. So mm. they started, uh, they wanted to see if we could come play because at this point, this is uh, 2006, like there really wasn't any Kenyan musicians coming over to the United States. Mm -hmm. So the fact that we were coming over was, it was kind of a unprecedented, yeah. really, like have a, a Luo. Yeah. I mean, it, it, our band wasn't strictly banga, but mm -hmm. we, we, most of the songs we sang were in Luo yeah. or Swahili. Yeah. So I got, I got connected with a lot of the Kenyan diaspora through that band. Mm -hmm. And the next thing that happened, which was interesting in this story was, uh, so the, this community here, they wanted to start bringing bands over. So they, I think it was 2008, 2007, it was right around when Barack Obama was running for president, I remember. It is great to be back in Kenya. 
Thank you so much for this extraordinary welcome. I know, I know it took a few years, uh, but as president, I try to keep my promises. So, uh, Dola Kabari yeah. came. Before that, they had, they had brought over uh, Bana Kadori, also another yeah. Benga Ben. Yeah. So Dola Kabari came, and I had nothing to do with this, but like three or four of the guys in the band he brought with him were all some of my best friends who, who I had met in Kenya in 2004 when I was yeah. meeting, you know, working with bands there. So, mm -hmm. uh, th like Freddie, Kolela, he, mm -hmm. he came. Another guy named uh, Ooko, uh, Jamarachi. with Dola Kabari. Yeah. So, uh, Dola was just here for about six months or maybe almost a year, but he went back, but some of them stayed. So, mm -hmm. they settled here in Allentown. So, at that point, uh, so around 2010, I, my other band, Extra Golden, like we stopped playing, I had to, finished grad school mm -hmm. there was just stuff going on that intervened in that band continuing to play so I wasn't playing for a while but I kept in touch with these guys here and by 2012 2013 I you know I, was, I needed to play in a band so yeah. I was looking for something so I came here because all my Kenyan friends were here so I ended up staying here since then. <laughs> um, so that's like a sort of a synopsis of what happened, how I, how I got involved, and how we're here today with these musicians. Okay. You know, you call it differently. You're, you're calling, calling it uh, ethnomusicality, something like that. Ethnomusicology, yeah. Yeah. Is it... Uh, Will I be right if I say that you have a PhD in, in Benga music? Yeah, basically. I mean, I have... There, you can't really go to a university to get a PhD in Benga, but I... My PhD is in ethnomusicology, but as an ethnomusicologist, you have to do original research, you know? Yeah. So, my my research was on Benga, so it's fair to say that I have a PhD in Benga, but I'm just a, I'm really a, a student of Benga. Mm -hmm. I'm, I, I wanted to learn about its history, what happened, so yeah. the real PhDs are the musicians, like, especially the older ones. I'm asking that because I know in Kenya at the moment, most musicians, especially the younger ones, are trying to move away from Benga to yeah. what you called uh, Ohangla. Ohangla and you yeah. know other modern music. So yeah. do you think they are running away from gold to something that is not, or what, what would you say about Benga music in comparison to the rest of the other music kinds? Well, you know, music is always evolving, so you can't really expect things to stay, stay the same. But in, if you look at the spectrum of Kenyan music, Benga it, it is special because uh, it really, they had really developed some interesting and sophisticated ways of composing songs and playing guitar especially. Like there's, there's no other uh, music in, on the guitar that really sounds like that. They, mm they were very creative they and they they achieved that through a lot of hard work you know it's mm -hmm. like the Benga musicians they all often struggled to make a living but they 
it was what they had as a job, you know. So they they would play and practice very hard, and they they really developed their craft, you know. So that's I think that's impressive. It's like if you listen to the older stuff, like from the seventies, like Missiani and Cole La Maze. <laughs> That's one style that's very uh, sophisticated in in the guitar playing. And then during the 80s, there was a new style in the 90s, uh, Okach Biggie. That's yeah. like a, yeah. also another very, it's different, but very interesting. Yeah. And I would say, you know, it's impressive in terms of how they developed it, how they learned how to, how to play the guitar in new ways yeah. than their predecessors. <laughs> Kenyan music's always been influenced by Congolese music, but uh, these guys were, they were able to develop a, a different take on that mm. style, because in Africa, if you look across from Congo and going south through Tanzania, like up to Kenya, there was a lot of similarities between all of it, you know, it's like, it's almost like uh, rock and roll here in the United States, it's, mm. everyone's playing something on a similar platform, but they're developing their own local take on it, so, um, in Kenya, they, they had their own unique take on it, so, yeah. a lot of times people say benga is very derivative or boring, compared to Congolese music, for example, but mm. it's it's more like a, it's a local style, so the Congolese didn't invent how to play music in Africa, like everyone was doing it at the same time, yeah. so everyone has their own take on the modern uh, contemporary African music, so as far as what's happening now, I think I think it's it's great that people are trying new things. Um, I think they can one thing they can look to their predecessors in Benga for though is like uh, just the, the developing that okay. uh, their skills and craft on on an instrument. You know, it's like using keyboards and computers is also technically or musically sophisticated, but uh, there's just something about when you play in a band night after night, yeah, you know, yeah. recording, yeah. It, it, it inspires a, another level of uh, creativity, I think, yeah. in terms of how you play an instrument and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. about uh, that particular recording you did mm -hmm. which uh, from the way you explained it's like it was a big success because it gave you a lot of uh, tours if I may say yeah. around the world so yeah. was it successful because of the Benga influence or what made that music successful yeah it really was I mean the band we were in before that was not successful <laughs> so I mean we had fans but the, when you combine something like benga with rock and roll like it's it's an interesting combination
people in the music fans in the United States were interested in it and in Europe so and it was unusual I mean there's always been collaborations between African musicians and uh, American or European musicians but they usually had happened uh, I don't know more high profile like Paul Simon or Peter Gabriel mm -hmm. things like that mm -hmm. and those things were cool you know I, I enjoyed those things but this was a uh, different it was more like a band playing in bars in Kenya connecting with a band playing in bars here in the US so yeah. it was it was more like a grassroots type development so th th I think that I think that appealed to some people um, and it was another interesting thing about that story is that it coincided with when Barack Obama was becoming more prominent and eventually would be elected president of, of US so we had a connection with him because the first time we played here we couldn't get our visas sorted out and we were playing in Illinois mm -hmm. so he was a senator for Illinois at that time mm -hmm. so we actually reached out to his office and they helped us sort that out yeah. And today we can see that future for Kenya on the horizon, but tough choices are going to have to be made. So our promoters thought this was very interesting and they, they really promoted this story. Yeah. But it, it appealed to people. And then when, and we were so grateful that this worked out because it didn't look like it was going to happen, you know. Yeah. That it's difficult to not, first of all, get a visa but to go to the embassy and get an interview and you got to pay all this money for it yeah. they sort of expedited it so because we were running behind yeah like we were going to miss the entire tour this is the first time we played mm. live so yeah. but it all worked out somehow and we were very grateful and one of the guys opio bilongo wrote a song to praise obama I am proud to be the first American president to come to Kenya. And of course, I'm the first Kenyan American to be president of the United States. Okay. So, and then that coincided with Obama running for president. So, mm -hmm. it was like a in terms of publicity, people were very interested in this. Like yeah, they, yeah. like it, it was good timing. Okay. <laughs> so we, uh, and we also had a good record label called Thrill Jockey. So they, they were good at uh, publicizing the band and getting us book shows. Uh, all around the U.S. and like in Europe and Canada, so. Okay. Um, but people loved seeing that band. Just it was it was unique to see Kenyans and Americans playing together. So. Okay. You you you've rightly put it that uh, Benga musicians back in Kenya are struggling to earn a living from their music. Yeah. Uh, what is your advice to them? How can they make money from their music? That's that's like the essential question for musicians because it's not easy to make me money here either so um, I know that uh, back in Kenya when I was there musicians were able to get work playing at clubs you know mm -hmm. but it's not very low pay mm -hmm. so uh, I think my advice would be, and this would go the same for a band here, but the first thing you have to do is be organized and disciplined. Like a lot of bands, the failure of a lot of bands results from a lack of 
organization and you know a lot of bickering and stuff like that it's like if you want to succeed you have to work as a team so a lot of bands need a leader you know but I, I feel like bands need to be as democratic as possible like mm -hmm. cooperate mm -hmm. um, but it really takes everyone to have the same mindset you know um, and it's difficult because everyone's got to make ends meet they got to pay the bills so you might not have time to dedicate to that mm -hmm. um, but if you're an individual that's a different story but if you're working as a band yeah there needs to be teamwork yeah true and then uh, in terms of uh, you know working with many musicians from Kenya mm -hmm. are you now able to sing in any Kenyan language and also play uh, the, the in any of the instruments like uh, a Kenyan La no seruna ma we a bara ka wono ni sue ya wa a be be. It's hard singing Luo, man. I don't consider myself a great singer, but if I have, if I need to sing for a band, I'll, I'll do it. I, I enjoy it. So I, uh, I can sing any language if you write down the words for me so um i'm not it's been a while so i can't really do it right now but in extra golden i i sang in luo um and english we mixed um i did sing a little bit recently we performed in philadelphia and our singer was not there so Somebody had to do it, so me and Freddie sang together. Okay. Looked like a couple of Musa Juma songs, things okay. like that. Do you think, or uh, maybe can you mention some of the Kenyan musicians that you think or admire, that you think who are really good at their game? So, going back to the earliest uh, recorded Kenyan music, uh, there was a couple guys back then who I really admire. Um, one of them is named Oliman Diti. So he was a uh, he played box guitar mm -hmm. in the 50s and 60s, and I, th I think he died in 1980s. There's another guy who he's kind of like an impersonator of him. Mm -hmm. Same name, Oliman Diti. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure if everyone knows that he's not the original guy, but he, uh, but the original, the the impersonator guy is good, but mm. original guy, I mean, it's just cool music. It's like uh, back then the way they play the guitar was all this finger picking, uh, mm. and I wish I knew more about the history of that music. I didn't really get a chance to learn that but you can see it especially in Luya guitar players too they they develop this style of finger picking yeah with the right hand so yeah. um that's one uh oh there's a speaking of Luya musicians uh george mukabe yeah. <laughs> He's like a similar uh, thread as this guy I'm talking about, Oliman Titi. Mm -hmm. uh, and then Owino Misiani, he came after that. Mm -hmm. uh, he was very interesting. I interviewed him when I was there before he died. Uh, he. Some people, a lot of a lot of Luos don't really like his music, but he was popular back then. Yeah. I mean, people I talk to here, so mm -hmm. um, he just had a interesting way of composing songs. Yeah. 
um, and the guitar playing. And then one of my favorites, Cole La Maze, uh, mm. from Vic Victoria Kings. Yeah. So, just a, I love the, the way they played the guitar and how they combined different, like three guitar players plus bass. The way they combined the three parts, like it, very interesting. Uh, it was like very tightly composed, which is unusual yeah. nowadays because nowadays people just kind of play one thing yeah. over and over again and yeah. there's a solo but it keeps going but back then they they would have one guitar would play the other one would just wait and then it would come in and they would inter interlock you know and then one would drop out and mm. it had a very cool texture to it <laughs> Musa Juma was really good. I got, I got to meet him and I played with him here in the U.S. He came over here to tour, so I went on a short tour with him because they needed a musician. Nobody else could go, so yeah. I went and brought my equipment and we played in uh, Georgia, North Carolina. We played a few shows, so. Mm -hmm. I really enjoyed playing with him. Mm -hmm. I did. I I briefly met him in Kenya, but didn't get to know him much until he was here. Um, one musician that is pretty popular now in Kenya is uh, John Junior. So mm -hmm. John Junior. I knew him in Kenya when he was just starting in music. Like uh, he played with Opio Bilongo and. Ochino Jaguasi. Mm. He actually lived in my apartment for like six months okay. in Nairobi. Yeah. <laughs> so I became friends with him. He's. I'm glad he's continuing. You know, he's. He. Sort of took the style that Musa Juma was playing, and. You know, s switched it around a little bit to a different thing, mm. which is more. Contemporary it sounds good. Um, those are some of my favorites. I mean, I spent so much time listening to all that music and studying it. So there's all kinds of things that I learned from it. So I have lots of different favorites I could talk about. Okay. It would take me a while to remember which all of them. Yeah, I know you've done a lot of work with newer musicians. Yet, yeah. by any chance, did you get a, a chance to work or know of any Luhia musicians? Yes. Um, so the first time, uh, first or second time I, I was there, I, I worked with a musician named Jackson Ngosi. Mm -hmm. So his, he's a guitar player. His father kind of well-known Luya musician mm -hmm. named I think Williams Ngosi. Okay. I think he was famous for singing Mwanamberi. Mm -hmm. Like Mwanamberi. I don't know if he composed it, yeah. but he he, 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 he mm -hmm. popularized that song, I mm -hmm. think. It's called Ngosi. Yeah, Ngosi. Yeah. That guy, I, I knew him. Mm -hmm. So I interviewed him and his son. I knew his son. Uh, and then when I was, when I learned about Bengo, there was, there's lots of Luya musicians who play. I mean, of course, Luyas have their own style of music like Bengo, but different, you know. But Luya musicians have always been known for being superb, I think. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so they, a lot of the, some of the most respected musicians playing Luo Benga are Luyas. Yeah, so yeah. I met Nzino Sundwa. Yeah, Nzino Sundwa, yes. Yeah. So he, I didn't really get to do much with him, uh, but I 
hung out with him. I saw him play, like, he's one of the best guitarists mm -hmm. I ever saw in Kenya. Mm -hmm. Like, there was something about the way he played, which was his, uh, he just had like a brilliant style. Yeah. So, Jamarachi from Allentown, he played in his band. So, mm -hmm. like, he can play a similar style to a, a Zeno Sunuwa. Yes. Um, and then there was definitely Louis, Louis musicians who I encountered mm -hmm. all the time because, you know, like the in the music community, Louis and Louis yes. sometimes overlap. Yeah. Because um, I think in general, like, in with Banga and stuff, like the Luos always, they always had more of a live band scene. Like there was yeah. places where people wanted to go pay money to drink and listen to the music. So mm. there was a lot of work. So they, they needed, they, a lot of musicians got involved. In terms of guitar music bands, like I really didn't, learn much about Kikuyu music. Uh, I met a couple of Kamba musicians because they also play like a Benga style, you know. Um, yeah, and it, it goes on and on. There's so many different uh, different avenues you can go into yeah. to learn about, which haven't, haven't been studied much. Okay. There really hasn't been too much study of all that music. That's right, I, that reminds me, I also the Maroon Commandos. Yes. The, the, I think most of those guys were Louis musicians, right? Yes. Yeah, I met a couple of them. They, one, one of the times I visited Kenya, they were playing at uh, that club called Simmers. Yes. Remember that? I don't yeah. think, is that still there? No, it was demolished. <laughs> it's not there. Demolished, huh? Yeah. What did they put, what did they put there instead? Uh, by the time I left, it was um, a car park. That was a good place uh, to listen to music. Yeah. Yeah. So you, 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 you would really miss it if you go to Nairobi. Simmers, I mean, it wasn't my favorite place, but it was nice. It was convenient, like if you're in downtown, you could go there to listen to a band. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, most of the times I saw bands play was in like, you know, outside, like uh, Karyobangi, Motela, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, Places like that, Dendora. Yeah, I remember I would go there, and some people would say, "What? what? You can't go over there. It's yeah. it's, it's dangerous." Yeah, it's risky, yeah. <laughs> but luckily, my friends who I went with kept me out of trouble. So yeah. I never nothing bad happened to me going out to see bands. But mm. I don't know how it is today. Yeah, I, I think now with the kind of the economy that is in Kenya. Yeah. So the insecurity is, is higher than when it, what, what it was then. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, so it's true. It's like when the poorer people are, the more chance there's going to be yeah. somebody trying to rob you. Yeah. <laughs> so what instrument do you play? Uh, guitar, mostly, yeah. Because I know in guitar we have bass, we have solo, we have rhythm. So which Yeah, one? I play all those. So... It depends on the situation, you know, like uh, I played bass, uh, I love playing bass, and guitar, rhythm and solo kind of go together. It's, it depends which type of style you're playing, you know. Um, but with the, when I play with the Kenyan guys here, I usually play bass or rhythm guitar and then a couple songs I'll play solo. Okay. But uh, I can never come close to playing like those guys. Mm. It's just... I can, I can, I can, I can uh, suffice. <laughs> mm. But... The thing about all those musicians who I work with here, like Jamarachi, Steve, uh, when they were working in Kenya, 
that was all they did. So they they played day in, day out. They really mastered how to how to do these things. Yeah. So for me, if I'm gonna play like that, I have to spend a week learning it. <laughs> yeah. And it's it's tough. It's like intense. Mm -hmm. Whereas for them, it's like they can just even if they don't even know the song, they can play something that'll that'll take care of business. But yeah. For me, it's different. I have to really study it. Yeah. Um, but that's like any uh, you know any other job. Mm -hmm. And since they they worked on it hard, playing as much as they did in live bands, you know, because those bands those bands will start playing at seven o'clock and play till morning. Yeah. I've never seen musicians work as long hours as you have yeah. in Kenya, yeah. you know, something else. Mm. Mm -hmm. So let me ask you, you know, uh, this interview, yeah. I know many guys will watch it, uh, some of the music producers, others music promoters, yeah. so if a promoter was to approach you to give yeah. you a tour or a performance, what would be your response? Sign me up. <laughs> It just depends, uh, I mean, depends on, also depends on money, you know. It's like if you're going to stop what you're doing, go play music, it, it's not, you know, maybe when you're young, it'll work for anything, but mm. after you've done it for years, mm. it's like you need, it needs to be worth your time, you know. Yeah. But I love playing music, so if if and all the musicians I know it's the same thing it's like their all our ultimate dream would be able to make a living playing music you know mm -hmm. so it's it doesn't always work out that way sometimes it works but uh you know it's musicians even if they have to resort to other strategies to survive like they're all they're always that'll be their first calling you know yeah and that that's how i feel too yeah so i'm yeah. always looking for an opportunity yeah because i know there are some promoters who may want to bring a kenyan band here yes. but you know the cost of bringing the kenyan band and the logistics yes. may be really tough so some yeah I've, may, I've encountered that somebody may prefer to bring just the band leader and then get some yeah. support from here. Can you be able oh, to okay. give that kind of support so that you, you, you provide the backup? Yeah, that's that can be done. We've, we've done that before. This guy, Werason. Yeah. No, not Werason. Bandason. Yeah, President Bandason. Yeah, so he came by himself. Yeah. And I think I wasn't involved, but some some of these guys performed with him. Mm. And then he ended up, his style is more like Congolese music, so mm. I think he found some Congolese guys yeah. to play. So there, there's musicians around, so if, if people are looking to bring musicians, it's, it's possible to assemble a band. Mm. The problem is all, <laughs> all the musicians at least all the Kenyan musicians I know all have very, they're very busy with their jobs. Yeah. So mm -hmm. it's like in order to get people to come perform, especially out of town, it's like, you know, that's when people start yeah. <laughs> asking for stuff. So There's, we know some people in Texas who have done shows. Mm -hmm. When John Jr. came, we, we did a show in Houston, and Dallas. Mm. Um, a lot of people came too. There's a lot of Kenyans in Texas. Yeah. Believe it or not. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, what would be your message to Kenyans in regards to Benga music? I would say that Benga music is uh, it's a very special type of music. It has a unique heritage, so it's it's unique in Africa and in the world. So it's worth people revisiting it, even though it's you know it's it's become a little bit out of style. But there's 
there's a lot to learn there, um, especially in terms of production. How they how they really they really honed the craft of playing guitar and orchestrating it together into a you know a, a rich texture. Mm -hmm. So it's I think it's worth listening to and learning about. Um, and in in that regard, I would suggest like Victoria King's Kole Le Maze, Omore, uh, Owino Missiani are some good ones. And in terms of younger people learning about music, be open. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's a lot of times when people think about getting involved with music, they're looking for a way to become popular quickly, you know, mm -hmm. because that brings rewards. But I think the people who really have staying power and who have a legacy in music, they, they, they're not following a trend. They, they look at everything and they incorporate different things and come up with their own unique style. So, mm -hmm. and in terms of Kenyan music, there's lots of interesting things to draw on, like the indigenous music and folk songs, mm -hmm. things like benga, mm -hmm. um, and then going further, like around Africa, there's so many interesting musics to draw on for a young person trying to come up with something new. So, mm -hmm. um, nowadays, it's at least it's easy to listen to different music. It's on your phone, you can listen to so much. So, mm -hmm. my best advice would be just be open-minded, look, find new things to to emulate or learn from. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so I want to appreciate, uh, again, I want to appreciate you for allowing us to have this conversation with you. My pleasure. Uh, mm. Thanks for coming. Make, thanks for making the effort. Yeah. I did a lot of interviews in my research, so okay. I know it's, it's difficult to get people to sit down for an interview in Kenya. I know that. Yeah. Um, but it's it's worthwhile for everyone yeah so mm. it's a good thing yeah like for you you know you have a lot of history about lua music more than people who are in kenya yeah because uh, some of the musicians you've mentioned i'm mm. sure there are guys in kenya who don't even know about them <laughs> <laughs> yeah well i that was my career i was trying to make a career mm. out of l knowing those things so mm. i spent some time on it and it's not really where my career ended up, but I, I still think about those things and mm -hmm. I care about it. So, yeah. So, having studied what you study, so do, do you? What do you? Where do you work now? So, I work in construction, actually. So, okay. I work for a company. We work. We build things at pharmaceutical companies. So, I always did that in my during my life, like. Okay. Because music is, it's always hard to make money yeah. for anything involved with music, teaching. Mm. So I always had a backup yeah. thing going on. So, but I'm ready to retire from that and go back to music. Okay. <laughs> That's okay. my plan. Yeah. Okay. Uh, thank you so much. And we wish you all the best in uh, uh, whatever you're planning to do. All right, cheers. Mm. Thank you. Santa Santa. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Ian, for that inspiring story. My name is Bonventure, and for Moving Pictures Kenya, this is the African Eye.